I am going to be adding a PhD statement of purpose for Stanford University in economics. This is going to be really, really fun. Hi, I'm Dr. Natalie Morse, and I help people get into PhD programs so they can become leaders and change makers. And one of the biggest hurdles people struggle with is how to write your statement of purpose, right? It can feel broad, it can feel big, but let's get into it. Let me show you the magic of how I work, and I think you'll learn a few things. The first thing I like to do when I get a new statement of purpose is to check out the prompt because they're all a little bit different and I really want you to pay attention to the questions they're asking. Sometimes it's like four or five questions layered on and you need to answer all of them in order to be really effective. So here she put the prompt for me at the top and she says in thousand words in some cases. So clearly she's thinking of using this statement of purpose for other schools as well. And the prompt says, you should describe your reasons and motivations for pursuing a graduate degree in your chosen degree program, noting the experiences that shape your research ambitions, indicating briefly your career objectives and concisely stating your past work in your intended field of study and in related fields. All right, so what I do is I basically read the essay, you know, from the start to the end once or twice, and then I go back and edit. So go ahead and read that really quick. It's actually really nice to read it from the start to the end, and then also from the end backwards, so that way you know if you're kind of confusing people or leaving things out. So another key thing is to check the word count from the beginning. So where are we? We are at 1600 words, and we need to be at a thousand. So. Do you guys know how much 600, 600 words are? It's a little over half a page. So probably like to hear 470, ooh, a little bit more. So basically like this whole chunk. Yeah, so you can see it's a lot to cut. So I'm going to be pretty liberal here as I cut. Clearly if you had 2000 words or not, you know, you could leave a little bit more in, but let's just get down to it and see what I see. And you know, this is an iterative process, so I might go through and then I might need to make deeper cuts again on the second time. So I'll just start and I feel like you get a good feel for the person, what they're trying to say, and then you can get tighter and tighter and tighter. You don't need to accomplish everything you absolutely need to, you know, line by line, like it's okay to come back. So after I graduated college, I boarded a plane to China as a Peace Corps volunteer. That's a really great opening. I love it. The culture I encountered surrounding women was quasi similar to the culture in the US. Women who weren't married by a certain age were considered either undesirable or iconoclast who disregarded the informal social norms of marriage. The pressure for women to marry and settle down in both countries is overwhelming. So everybody's asking her if she was married. And then she said she got evacuated in 2020 due to COVID. The same questions about my future were now being asked by my family, except they also included, why are you going back to school? Okay, so when you only have a thousand words, this is a lot of space to devote to, you know, I guess questions. And if it's really relevant to her research goals and things like that, I can see it. And I know it is because I've already read this. So she does want to think more about bringing women into economics and like bringing their viewpoint in and how we can think about decision making. All of that makes sense. This is just a lot of space to devote to that. So let's see what we can do. So I'm just cutting words because we, we just don't have the space. If she wants to basically connect those questions she was asked in China to the questions she's now being asked, but I don't really think we want to do this. I don't think we necessarily want to bring in questions of like, why are you going back to school? So I want to think if we can reword this. Let me look. So let's cut this and we'll bring this up. So it's interesting. She brings up her mom and then Spanish and German host mother. So I like that she talks about like she's like travels and stuff, but it's a lot in one area and I'm a little confused. I'm kind of like, you know, if you bring something up, I kind of need to know a little bit more like to connect the dots. Like when were you in Spain? When were you in Germany? Like it's just kind of like splattered there. So I'd rather just bring up more things about what she really wants to do. I just don't, I don't know why this is relevant. Like when you're talking about doing your PhD, of course we all have pressures in our lives, like to do what society expects us to do. And I think you can make that argument, but I don't think it's the strongest argument because that kind of puts you in a passive place, kind of like, well, society wants me to do this and I'm really feeling that pressure, but I'm fighting so hard against it versus like, there's this thing I really want to do. And I know it might be hard, but I'm qualified, I'm ready, I'm excited, I'm going to do it. Like, it's just a kind of a different feel. And I'm not saying this isn't wrong. Like, I'm a female, I have these pressures, like I totally understand it. I just don't know that it's the strongest 
argument for why this person is the best person to do a PhD here and, and go on like that. I'm gonna remove that. And so now when you bring up college, the thing that I really want you to think about anytime you bring up a proper place, noun, person, what have you, is to give them context to the reader. like. In college, I have no idea where you are in the world. I have no idea what your major is. I have no idea anything, like what year it is, right? Like, so here we go. And and again, Econ 150, like, you don't need to spell them. <laughs> it's interesting. I just said give context and then I'm like, let's cut context. But this kind of thing, like micro 155 or whatever, doesn't really matter. They don't care then like the exact numbers of it. You give context here by saying my first economics course. So you don't need the rest. And let's just say at you know, wherever you are at XX University. So I always put XXs if things I don't know, but I assume that this person writing it can easily fill in. First economics course at XX University was taught by a young ex-military woman with a passionate and conversational teaching style, who as it turned out would be my mentor throughout college. Up to you on how much you want to describe her demographics. Ex-military women with a passion for teaching by a, let's just say passionate, ex-military woman. We don't really need to get into nitty gritty about her teaching style. Be my mentor throughout college. And so while this whole section really speaks very highly of her mentor, which is amazing, it's a lot of space. And you're describing her characteristics more than you're describing yourself. So we want to just think about the space here that we have and probably going to cut a lot of that. My passion ex-military woman who would be my mentor throughout college, who let's say became a mentor. It was her class that sparked economic flame in my otherwise indifferent brain. She showed me how economics relates to everything from the simple idea of market equilibrium to dating the black market and to why giving to charity surprises economics. So be on my classes, I became truly motivated to pursue a career in economics because of several insightful research projects. So now this is what I, cause I read ahead. So we spend about this paragraph talking about a research project and then this one to all, this is all undergrad, right? And now we're talking about this person's masters, which they spend this much space on. So while all these undergraduate research experiences are really great, from a space perspective, we do need to spend a little more, more time on the masters and hopefully get into what you're doing there because it should be at a slightly higher level than what you did in undergrad. So I'm gonna wanna condense some of these graduate, uh, sorry, undergrad research experiences and ask for more on the master's side. So let's see if we can sum these up a bit. You can say with the assistance, but I would per se, I, when you're working under a PI, you can just say under or with, with is fine. With Dr. Acciato, we looked at how to, and so this is just grammar in my view. One can go like this, but they should not be capitalized. So better, and we don't need the dot. And I do love listing things out. It's just easier to, digest as a reader. So I really like this approach. When you're talking about research projects, instead of saying we looked at, it's better to say we researched or the goal of our project was or our research hypotheses were, right? Instead of like looked at or thought about or, or studied, right? So I would say by completing our first major research project, we are project focused on how to better teach economics. Again, when you're talking about research, like you're testing something or you have a question or you're trying to figure something out. So instead of just like, we looked at how we can teach economics better. Like we wanted to understand what mechanisms or how to improve, like what, like what specifically were you doing to better teach economics, improve economics curriculum, economics retention, understanding, like what do you mean here? So I would, unless you've got like general things that you, number one and number two could really be combined to better teach economics, to improve the recollection of economic theory with these students, obviously, but we'll, we'll leave them apart to better, like, what does this mean? So I'll put a comment here and then this person will have to add something in. What does this mean? How is this measurable, right? And that would be kind of something you would talk about. Improve the recollection of economic theory and three, apply economics to daily life. Like this isn't a research question or like it's not a topic. So I'm actually just going to combine these all into one. Watch how I do this. Our pro our project focused on understanding how you better teach economic and improve the recollection of economic theory. Because like this thing doesn't like that. Hopefully our work is applicable to daily life or other things. Like I understand there is theoretical work, but it kind of goes without saying, so we don't need that. And then she's going to talk into how the project worked. We used Humans of New York, a photo journalism blog that captures the stories of New Yorkers as a tool for her general education students to understand and recall the basic tenets of economics. So, 
Okay, it's not really clear how using this blog will help them study economics, but for the final product, project, your students interviewed a random person from their community, took their picture and applied the economic concepts to the stranger's story. So basically trying to understand what decisions they made in their life and how that might you know, pertain to economics. I think we can say this better. It's really not relevant to talk about the Humans of New York blog because they ended up interviewing people outside of this blog, right? If we use the blog for the data source, like, okay, but I don't think we are here, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. So we acquired her student to interview a random person from the community, take their picture and apply economic concepts, apply economic concepts to what with their story, to understand, to justify, like I would describe what you're really trying to do, to apply economic concepts to story. Like, again, I would say, what were you looking for here? Like specifically, what were you trying to understand, measure? Okay, thinking back on this research project, using your general education courses, our sample population was an invaluable decision. So again, like what were you measuring? What were you testing? When you talk about using them as a population, you had to test something, right? This is a great vignette talking about the sunk cost thing. Again, though, from a space perspective, it does guide her later about why she wants to go into research on women. But think about like, again, the space you have. So we'll leave it and we might need to come back and cut it. This class was about 50% women, whereas high level economic courses do it to roughly 10 to 15% women. I will never forget the example one student used, it, used to explain sunk costs. She said, if you're not happy in a relationship, don't stay because you've been together for five years. You're lying the sunk cost fallacy to take over your decision making. If you're not happy, it's not only okay to leave, but optimal. This example is so valuable because her perspective helps balance not only the gender ratio for this research project, but also women's perspectives in the field of economics generally. So I would just say that this experience made me realize that women's roles in economics are important and valid. And I want to be a part of that versus leaving it all on this, this person's example so i would say this highlight how valuable how valuable women's perspectives they feel the economics valuable to what to whom for what for what end like this highlighted how valuable women's how women's perspectives in economics are valuable excuse me and in economics are valuable and that exposing more women to economics will lead to more contributions from women but yeah like so i agree like i'm a feminist i'm a fucking big feminist but I want more contributions for women for what gate for what purpose though right like it's not just to like make us feel good it's because we have valid things to say and we have important points to make so i would make that more clear uh which will lead to more what i would say like you know diverse voices bringing new ideas to this field right like whatever you can make that deeper but like it's not just that we're there it's like that we have value for me for the world for whoever Okay, so comfortable with my knowledge and experience with the basics of research, I wanted to expand my understanding of data economics and further explore the ideas of correlation. Da da da. Doesn't serve a huge purpose because it just says, like, I wanted to do more. Like, if you wanted to talk about your experience doing correlation causation, you should say, in this project, we did that. So that would be a better spot way to do that. And again, we don't know what year this is. We, like, we're just like, I took another class. You know, if you want to bring me logically through like freshman year, maybe this is sophomore year, just kind of bring me through your journey a bit year, or you could say in 2022, whatever year you, you know, did this course. Okay, beautiful. I think you had the word beautiful, beautiful visualization. Prior to taking this course, I devoured economics in one lesson by Henry Hazlitt and the idea that long-term solutions might equally, might equally as much as short-term. Thus, I saw a cumulative project that might explain the impacts of long-term international policy. Okay, I sought out, let's just call it a research project. I don't know what cumulative means. Research project that might explain the impacts of long-term international project to explore the impacts of long-term international policies. Based on what I know, knew of how aid organizations were dedicating funds to combating hunger, I wanted to know, does the daily per capita calorie consumption, okay. Let's just call this my research hypothesis. My research statement or question was, daily per capita calorie consumption have a negative correlation on infant mortality rates. I use SATA to analyze data. Okay, this is a better way to bring up SATA, in my opinion, than to be like, I took a course and it was fun. Thus, I set out a research project. This is my question. I use SATA to analyze data from World Development Report. I looked at metrics across 99 countries. I looked at metrics across 99 countries, including infant mortality rate. So we can cut this whole sentence. On presentation day, I had my hand shot up when the professor asked for volunteers. Just been off space to like really bring that up. But again, these are valid points. I'm just, from a space perspective, 
I'm cutting, but you could go back if you had more space. I explained that whether a woman was enrolled in high school had a significant effect had a higher significance level than her caloric intake and lowering a country's infant mortality rate. I explained that the education level had a higher significance level than her caloric intake and lowering, and lowering infant mortality. If women, da, 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 yeah, okay, that's what you just said, so we don't need to say that again. If women are educated, infant death tends to decrease. An insight like this could help allocate private donations or determine the optimal focus of an international aid agent. Instead of exclusively providing an immediate hunger relief to reduce a country's infant mortality rate, we should also be considering long-term solutions such as female education and representation in the classroom. So all of this is background, but I'm still not really understanding what you want to do here at this school at Stanford or at this PhD program. So like, I might bring that up sooner or at least think about how you can tie this to be like, this is what I learned. Now I want to do this. Let's just say resources, resources and A instead of exclusively good old semicolon. Instead of exclusively providing immediate hunger relief to reduce a country's infant mortality rate relief, we should also be considering long-term solutions such as female education and representation in the class. Okay, we don't have space for that, but we're getting there. Okay, so we were at 1600 words. Let's see where we are now. We are at 1200. Okay, we're doing really good. But this is how it goes, right? You kind of have to keep going over a paragraph a few times to kind of find out what you need and what you don't. Okay, she keeps being like the following year, but like we should give some context. So. Let's just say in 2022, or whatever it was, in 2020, I started my senior honors thesis. Don't know that this needs to be capitalized. You just want to show good grammar, punctuation. It shows you know how to write. I designed an economic experiment to examine whether the knowledge of long-term effects of international aid would alter an individual's decision to allocate private donations or international aid over it. Okay. So this is interesting. So you basically use this to create this project, which is great. It shows like progression of thought. So I want to kind of weave that together a little bit better. Let's think about how we can do this. So basically you did one project and it sparked another interest. These results piqued my interest. Okay. Design economic experiment to examine whether the knowledge of long-term effects of international aid would alter an individual's decision to allocate private donations to international aid organizations despite contributions from notable celebrities. So you bring that up, but like, we don't really bring it up again later. So it's another thing when you talk about your work, you have to think about like, yeah, there's a lot of details I could put in, but like, are they really relevant? So the thing you're testing here is like, does knowledge change the behavior? Obviously, celebrity influence is a big thing, but it's not the main goal that you're working on unless it is. And then you could bring that up. So I'll bring that over. I ran the experiment in the economic science lab with the help of Dr. Charles Noiser and Dr. Tahidor Rahman. I used the trailer from the documentary, Poverty Inc. Okay, okay, so you did this with, okay. To deliver information about the negative, long-term, unintended consequences of continued aid. This trailer to whom? In the small sample size. I, I would say I showed the trailer to study participants about the negative, long-term, unintended consequences of continued aid. I, in the small sample size, I didn't find statistically significant evidence to support my hypothesis, which was, you didn't even tell me your hypothesis. That's my hypothesis. Hypothesis that new knowledge of the negative long term effects of international aid would alter an individual's decision. So, would by alter you mean would have them not donate? But however, I was able to identify three trends. I found that prior knowledge of the private aid organization encouraged donations, being exposed to the long term consequences of aid discouraged donations, and interestingly, women were the only participants who changed their donations when presented with new or more information. So, that is called a crossed effect. So, basically, so when you say that, being exposed to long-term consequences of aid discouraged donations, you really mean only in women, right? Because like, if this new knowledge is being presented to everyone, and you say that women were the only ones who changed their mind, then other people did not. But prior knowledge of the private organization encouraged donations to being exposed to the long-term consequences of aid. So yeah, I would, I'm going to put this here and have you explain, like, how is this possible? If people change their behavior, and number two, but then later you say only women did. Just thinking through these results a bit. Okay, so now we're getting to the master's program and we still haven't said anything about why we're applying here, what we want to do. Like, So this is a lot of <clears throat> space to give on background. I think it's a great background, but let's go back to the question. That's basically the reasons and motivations. Like you want more females to be in economics, but you're not also really telling me what you want to change. Like. I want to do this. I want to have this impact. <clears throat> so why do you want your this degree? 
These are all your experiences that shaped your research ambition. And now we need to talk about your career objectives. So we still haven't gotten to why you want to pursue a graduate degree. This is just like, I've done all this cool stuff. So why do you want a grad degree? Like, so now as a master's student at Boston University, I think this is where you bring up the thing about like being evacuated from COVID. So after being evacuated, decided to pursue my master's in economics at Boston University. I started in 2000XX and I focused on economic development policy research for Peru. I've been researching the economic and long-term effects of certain policies aimed at raising GDP per capita. However, I've never been to Peru. I've never been to Peru. So the first thing I did was research, read surveys, and watch interviews of Peruvians. I tried to understand what their norms and values were before we're thinking about what policies to recommend. I, I think this is great. I value this step of the research process so much because it makes me consider who I am impacting. For example, reading surveys in Spanish that were conducted in Spanish and finding out that most Peruvians feel a great sense of job insecurity allows me to then research how to best address an issue that aligns with their norms. So does that mean you speak Spanish? I think that would be great to know. Okay, so I am, this is interesting. So you just were like, lastly, there's a career highlight, worked with the EPA as a program analyst. So this is interesting because I think it's very common to think that only academic experience is the most important and to like downplay your professional experience sometimes. You spent paragraphs and paragraphs talking about your research experience, which is amazing. But then we just have like one, you know, a couple sentences here without really getting into the meat of what you did and this like really what you gained. I think that that is interesting. I would love to give more context here. So I'm going to bring this up a bit. Did you do an internship? Was this happening before you did your master's? I just need to know like where this is also in your timeline. I have spent with the EPA as a program analyst. Working for a federal agency has shown me the bureaucracy of red tape that goes into any governmental decision or policy. I am currently working to launch a new financial system that will be used to house data related to hazardous waste cleanups. The fact that this financial system will undoubtedly help identify and track parties responsible for environmental contamination is what motivates me despite the bureaucracy. Dedicating my life to economics is an uphill battle I am already betting my career on. Okay, so I like that. Let's just say like, let's just like say that these skills are going to serve you in your PhD. So difficult, the arduous, the come with incorporating research into policy and am well equipped to tackle these issues during my PhD and beyond. Right, we have to start talking about what you wanna do after the PhD, so that's important. My main focus when studying economics used to be on purely developmental economics or how to end extreme poverty, but my experiences over the past three years have refined my passion to the role women do and should play in all economies, both in developed and developing countries. Okay, so we don't need that. My experiences over the past three years, and again, I'm not really sure what those are because I, I can't quite follow the timeline here, so I'm going to just make a comment here to be a little bit more specific. Be a bit more research and experiences. I have refined my passion to the role, have refined my research interests to the role women do and should play in all economies, both in developed and developing countries. Um, my research focus at Stanford. I hope to focus my research on and this I would bowl because they're gonna skim and it's nice if they know what you want to research. And so here's another tip. People tend to read the first sentence more so than like later. So if you have something important like this, I would put it more towards the top. Why women are left behind in education, how their salaries and even data study do, how we as a society can engender a more inclusive economy that serves its women too, and three, what leads to the irrational human decision that leaves out 50% of the world's population. So that's not really a research question or a research topic. You could say like, you know, what, what decision-making paradigms are encouraging policies to neglect women or whatever but this needs to be a little bit different or adjusted um so I, i'll edit it a bit but this person probably has a clearer idea of what they want to say what social norm or to the irrational human decision 50 <laughs> percent of the world's population policy doesn't like you know i'm not quite sure what they want to say here but I'll, I'll add a note can you describe what you mean by population and i probably should also say that that you mean female because 
Eh, should probably be more specific. Okay, so here when you talk about what you want to do, then you need to talk about why Stanford, this school, everything that they have is the best place to do it. So let's move this one up. And you should have identified faculty of interest. You should definitely put them here. You should definitely describe their work a little bit more and what you want to do to impact that. I would be humbled and honored to work with. So yeah, not any, like be specific. Who do you want to work with? I would be humbled and honored to work with Dr. XX or Dr. XX on projects and etc. And then again, you gotta talk about, okay, so they asked you, why are you choosing this? Like, I don't even know what you wanna do, like after you get your PhD. So we need to say that. This is true, but okay, I can empower people to like do better, but what are you gonna do? This is true, but what role do you see yourself in? Big picture and plus years. Um, now. My goal is to provide specialized knowledge and research that pushes for a deeper understanding of the complexity and importance of cultural differences and long-term consequences derived from experimental data when U.S. policymakers make decisions. That's just kind of broad, truly. So up here, when you talk about your research goals, I would be more specific, like, so you want a more inclusive economy, like specialized no knowledge and research that pushes for a deeper understanding of the complexity. Like, I want to test if educating men in how important women's roles are changes women's representation in higher leadership roles. Like, what? Like, what are we doing here? Be a little bit more specific. Can you specify Vogue? That's not what I want. Like, I think you guys are worried about going too deep, but by being too generic, I don't really see you as an expert or somebody who's like super like gonna get it done. Excited to collaborate. Like again, give them more ideas of the work you might do. Dr. XX in ZZ department on projects like XX. And additionally, like what else does Stanford have that makes it so special for you? Additionally, the research hub focus on XX or internship experiences will allow me to grow at skills in XX. Like tell me what you're going to do here. Does this program have that no others do? What will you gain here? Okay. Okay. What? And so, yeah, I all in all, this PhD will prepare me for my ultimate career goal to become a XX. Like, I don't know what you want to be. You're just like, I want to do some research, but <laughs> you never really tell me, like, what do you want to be? What do you want to do after? Give me some good ideas to see you as the exact right person. Okay, so let's see where we are from a word count perspective. 1,200 still. So now is the point where I do some more heavy cutting. I'm going to meet with the client and kind of discuss what we can move around a bit and adjust. We do need more on the end of like what their vision is, what they want to do, why this program is so important to that, right? So like we spend a lot of time on the background and we need to remember to talk about, you know, why you want this degree. What are your career objectives? Perfect. Well, it's in very good shape. This person is an excellent candidate. So let's see how things change from where we started to where we are now, right? So we moved a lot of things around. We shifted, right? Like, I mean, we didn't change that much, but like, I guess we did. So it's really just important to think about what the main message is here and how you can tell that story. So yeah, exciting to see what we'll come up with when I talk with the client and how we approach this and get all of her genius ideas out to make this better and better. I can't wait to see what we come up with next.